Over the years, Devolver Digital have published some of my all-time favourite games, including Enter the Gungeon and the awesome Hotline Miami. And now comes Disc Room, a game which on the surface looks set to boil my blood with rage, but after actually getting to play it, surprisingly this wasn't the case. So let's dive into this review and take a look what these devilishly devious disc filled rooms of death and despair have to offer. So starting a new game in Disc Room, you're treated to a short comic book style opening where you, a Buzz Lightyear looking scientist, hops aboard a giant disc orbiting Jupiter. You then find yourself in an open room and upon entering the next room you come face to face with your first discs, which more likely than not will promptly slice you into a mushy pile of giblets. Now this does a very good job of explaining the first room's rule sets without the need for words, but if you are still unsure what to do, in each room a set of objectives is displayed on the left side of the screen, and each of these is linked to opening the locked doors around the sides of the room. To begin with, most of them just require you to survive for a set amount of time, but new types of objectives are slowly implemented as you play through the game. Now the main objective of the game is to work your way through the ship's rooms in order to discover its secrets and purpose, and the ship is split up into 5 different zones, with each zone's rooms featuring a unique set of rules and gameplay mechanics. For example, you have rooms where the timer only counts up if you remain within the circle at the centre of the room, and others where the room's lighting dims every few seconds making it much harder to track the room's discs. Despite none of the areas ever explicitly explaining each of the rule sets, I found the game was very intuitive and I was able to understand them almost right away. So as you make your way through the ship's rooms, more and more discs are introduced, and these come in many different sizes, each with their own unique movement mechanics and methods of killing you. There are large slow moving discs which take up a lot of the play area, tiny discs which multiply making it impossible to track them all at once, some which shoot other discs at you, and discs which have an aura which slows your movement speed down. In total, the game contains 64 discs, and one of your secondary objectives is to get yourself killed by each of them. Some of the ship's rooms require you to do this in order to unlock them, and to track your progress, the disc menu displays all unlocked discs, and the map displays icons denoting the number of different discs in each room. So making your way through the ship's first area will likely prove relatively easy for most players, and before long you'll face your first boss encounter. These pit you against more advanced discs, each of which uses other discs as the form of attack, and the bosses in the game are pretty damn challenging and will take quite a few tries to beat them, but none of them fell overly unfair. The method to defeating each boss varies, but several of them require you to collect yellow orbs which appear at random on the player field. Collecting enough of these will destroy the boss, opening the door to the next area, and rewarding you with another comic strip to progress the story. Though I did find the story in Disc Room sort of takes a back seat to the main gameplay and doesn't really explain an awful lot. Now while completing the game doesn't require you to explore every room on the ship, Doing so will reward you with some very useful abilities. The first one that you'll likely obtain is the dash ability, which allows you to perform a short dash maneuver during which you're immune to damage. Other abilities include one which allows you to slow down time, and another which allows you to repel incoming discs. These abilities really help when tackling some of the game's harder rooms, and you're able to quickly switch between abilities before starting a room. I was also surprised to find that the game features some puzzle elements for you to solve, which often require the use of specific abilities and reward you for unlocking the secrets. Now I said at the beginning of this review that I thought that Disc Room was going to make me rage, but in fact I actually found it had quite the opposite effect. When the discs started flying in rooms, I found myself kind of zoning out as I tried to focus on the movement patterns, and the only time I actually got a little frustrated was when trying to beat one of the game's harder bosses after dying about 50 times to it. One of the great features included in Disc Room though is the difficulty settings menu, which features a ton of different settings allowing you to tailor the game to your liking. You can reduce the speed of gameplay or the difficulty of each room's objectives if you're finding things too tough, or if you're an absolute beast and finding things too easy, you can even speed things up. 
It's worth noting though that modifying difficulty settings does affect your high score for rooms, so if you're wanting to be top of the leaderboard, you might want to get some practice in and get good. One final feature in the settings is the ability to unlock all rooms and zones, which I thought was a great inclusion if you don't want to have to beat all objectives to unlock rooms and just want to chase those high scores. Now I haven't really wanted to get too in depth with this review, primarily because I didn't want to spoil some of the game's surprises and challenges, but I will say that I was pleasantly surprised by all that this group has to offer. What on the surface is an incredibly simple gameplay premise actually turns out to be ridiculously addictive and a ton of fun. Each of the game's rooms features its own set of leaderboards, so even after you complete the game's story, there's still plenty of replayability when it comes to high score chasing. Not only that, there's also a bunch of additional challenges for you to attempt if you're feeling like a boss. And you can even try your hand at speedrunning the game by switching the speedrun timer on in the options menu. Finally, to touch on the game's visuals and audio, the developers have gone for a cartoony aesthetic which I actually really liked, and I thought it was a very smart choice as it helps to keep the game's frame rate steady even when the screen is filled with a ton of discs. Audio wise, as expected we get plenty of mechanical and buzzsaw sound effects and a lovely meaty crunch as our character is mangled. And for those of you that are a little squeamish, you can swap out the blood setting for confetti in the options menu. When it comes to the game's soundtrack, we get a pretty awesome mix of fantastic high tempo futuristic electronic music, which I really enjoyed and I thought it set a great pace for the game. So now let's get on to rating disc room. Now I give games a rating between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay and whether I feel it offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating, I'd give Disc Room 4 out of 5 stars. The game really is a testament to how a fantastic game can be made by a small development team, using some very simple gameplay concepts and a ton of creativeness and talent. If you're a fan of high score chasers, I highly recommend picking up Disc Room and giving it a go. You can get the game from the US Switch eShop for $14.99, but currently I'm not seeing a UK eShop listing for the game. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. So what do you guys think of Disc Room? Are you going to be picking it up? Let me know in the comments down below, hit that like button if this review helped you out, and subscribe to the channel for future Nintendo Switch reviews and content. And consider becoming a Patreon to support me and the channel and gain access to additional behind the scenes videos. Don't forget that you can join the Star Seekers Discord server linked in the description box below to join its growing community. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time, stay safe and game on.